For me, it's a pleasure to make this interview with uh, Pedro Brugada in our Cardio Stars program. program. Uh, I think everybody knows more or less her career. Now is chairman of the cardiovascular division of the US Brussels in Belgium, and we are very glad to have you here. It's a real pleasure. And this is going to be my first question. It's about your, your biography. Where did you grow up? Well, I grew up in a beautiful place in the province of uh, Girona, in the north of Spain, uh, close to the Pyrenees at one side and close to the Costa Brava, the sea at the other side, mm -hmm. in a village called Banyolas uh, that has also uh, a beautiful lake. So that was a beautiful place to spend my uh, youth and, you know, to have a lot of opportunities, among others, of uh, starting with a very healthy life because of sport activities. Uh -huh. Perfect. Uh, did you grow up, grow up in a large family? Uh, well, we, uh, are, uh, we were four, uh, three brothers, one sister. Unfortunately, our sister died uh, a few years ago, suddenly. And, uh, but uh, we, we were four and uh, we had a lot of fun. And, uh, we, we have a major difference in age with, between the oldest one, it's me, and the youngest one, Ramon, 14 years of age. But we had a lot of fun together, yes. Mm -hmm. It's nice. And um, what about learning languages in the childhood? That was a matter of, uh, like many things in my life, a matter of, you know, uh, good luck. Actually, there was a, a, a person in uh, Banyolas, in that village, that had learned a lot of languages, uh, had no children, and actually to practice the languages was giving uh, lessons every single day. He would start around 5 p.m. and you could stay until 10 p.m. and you know he would go and the first hour will be English then French then German Japanese Chinese he was speaking everything you know mm -hmm. and uh, to be honest it was uh, very easy for my family actually to have me uh, learning these languages and the same happened to Josep to Ramon and to our sister Maria Dolos because uh, while we were learning actually our parents were working in the farm. Uh -huh. So it was a sort of uh, babysitter at the same time than uh, <laughs> learning languages. Yeah. It was very, you were very lucky, I think. It's Absolutely. <laughs> uh, why, why did you choose to study medicine? Medicine uh, was a little bit, again, a bit of chance because uh, at the time that I was, was working during the summer uh, in the farm, I would not have mind going into farming and, you know, chickens, rabbits and eggs and all these things. I was having fun with it. But my mother said, no, you have to study. So uh, I doubted. And uh, to be honest, the first year I registered for, both for medicine and philosophy. And mm -hmm. uh, it's after only the first year that I just let down philosophy and continue with medicine because I had very good marks at that time. Mm -hmm. So was, uh, I was doubting at that time. Okay. And why cardiology after? Again, a matter of chance, <laughs> because uh, during my studies, uh, the first year I had very good marks, actually I had 10, 10 out of 10 and everything. So I got a lot of opportunities in the university to go and uh, immediately after the second year to work in the research lab uh, of the pharmacology department. Uh, from this it came, you know, internal medicine department, etc. So I never actually attended the colleges. I was always in the hospital working or in the laboratory or in the emergency room. And uh, uh, at that time actually I spent a lot of time in hematology uh -huh. with Professor Rothman. Uh, I was actually there at the time that we described the uh, Haiti leukemia, a very special form of leukemia. And uh, when I finished medicine, moved to the mountains for six months as a general practitioner with my first wife, who was also a general practitioner. Then we decided to go to internal medicine. And when I finished internal medicine, I wanted to go to hematology. But I was very young. Actually, I was uh, 23. Mm -hmm. at that time, uh, and uh, the professor of uh, hematology, Rothman, said to me, you have to wait one year. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, my wife was pregnant, I had no insurance, I had no job, and there was a position in cardiology, so that's how I went into cardiology. Uh -huh. <laughs> and when, do, when did you choose to take the way of the electrophysiology? Well, um, the, my mentors at the time of the University of Barcelona were uh, Professor... Um, uh, at Betriu, um, Ginés Sanz, and uh, Paco Navarro. Eh? This, these people were very oriented to interventional cardiology. Uh, the interventional cardiology, of course, of 30 years ago. Eh? That's very different. But we had no real training in electrophysiology. And uh, I, I translated a book uh, from, uh, of emergency medicine from French to Spanish, 
and I got some money. And with the money I got from this translation, I bought a book uh, of electrophysiology, this uh, clinical electrophysiology of the heart, that was coming from a meeting in Amsterdam organized by Professor Wellens. And to be honest, I did not understand a word. Mm -hmm. So I said, that's impossible, you know. You are uh, finishing cardiology, and you cannot understand a word of this book, The Conduction System of the Heart was the exact title. So I decided that I, would sh I should learn something, and I decided to move six months uh, with my own money, no grants or nothing, abroad. And I was admitted, I was accepted in Chicago, Ken Rosen, and I was accepted in Maastricht by Professor Wellens. But it turned out that after three months of being there, I was offered a job, and then, you know, I never came back to Spain, mm -hmm. basically. Okay. Uh, and now, uh, looking, looking to, the, to the future, uh, what is your vision of healthcare and cardiology for the future? Well, we are now, I have had a fascinating uh, lifetime, you know, the last 30 years, what we have seen in particular in the area of cardiology, as, as you know, not only in cardiology, of course, you know, all areas of medicine, but in cardiology, the progress has been fascinating. Eh? So we are able to treat uh, things that, you know, 30 years ago, we would even not think of doing. Just imagine everything that we have in interventional cardiology, ablation of arrhythmias, the devices that we're implanting nowadays, resynchronization therapy. This is a beautiful time to be a doctor. The problem is, of course, the economics of healthcare. There we go. We have now uh, the start of the baby boom generation becoming 65 plusers. That means, and this has been predicted very clearly by associations like the American College of Cardiology, that we are going to face a doubling in the next years of the incidence and prevalence of cardiac disease. Now, to be honest, we do not have the nursing staff, we do not have the doctor's staff, we do not have the material, we even do not have the hospitals to treat the epidemic that we are now going to face. That on top of the crisis, of course, and you know very well that budgets for healthcare uh, are diminishing. This actually, they are not increasing. Our patients live longer, get more diseases, more complex pathologies. So we ha really have a real, real challenge ahead of us in the future. And I, to be honest, I don't know how we are going to solve all this. Uh, I think that we need a very, very big change in mentality, in the way we practice medicine and how we actually use our financial means. Very interesting uh, opinion about all the, f all the things that are coming for, for the future. Um, what do you think is the importance of uh, training abroad? Well, I think that, uh, you know, we have a saying in Spanish that uh, more or less is something like, uh, if, you have, if you want to have good fruits of a tree, the tree has to be transplanted. Mm -hmm. And I think that with people is exactly the same. I force all my trainees to go abroad for a period of time to see a different world, to see a different way of doing things. And two things can happen. Sometimes they learn other things that we do not have. So we improve also. And sometimes, which is also very good, they come back and they say, well, you know, the place I'm here is very good because mm -hmm. what I have seen there is nothing, you know. Mm -hmm. So this this a two double sides. yeah the two sides to the to the coin but I think that everybody during his training period should go abroad not only as a student we have the Erasmus program as you know in Europe but also as a trainee a fellow in cardiology uh, to learn some techniques etc I think it's a great experience to do that and should be obligatory mm -hmm. I, I agree with you completely uh, what do you think is the most important thing that you have accomplished in your career well, uh, I, to be honest, I think uh, I, I, I'm, I'm proud of several things. I'm, uh, first of all, proud of being a doctor. You know, I think I did my best as a general practitioner in the mountains. It was a very hard thing to do. But uh, by that, I learned how difficult general practitioners have in daily practice of medicine. And uh, by that, uh, I have learned to have a lot of respect for general practitioners. I think that's one thing, and I was proud of doing that to be a general practitioner. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of what I have done as a cardiologist uh, in several areas. First, as a clinician, I have a very, very, very huge clinical uh, practice. I, that, that ten thousands of patients that I, I've seen in my life. In an area where also we have been able to cure many of these people thanks to the new technologies. 
Uh, I have had, I think, a quite uh, satisfactory clinical research activity uh, in the sense of, uh, you know, what I have done in different technologies and techniques. But also I was very lucky, you know, of having uh, the, the, you know, the opportunity to see this Polish guy that turned out to have a completely new disease mm -hmm. that uh, after we published that with my brother Josep and we started to do the genetics of it with Ramon, came out to become, you know, a new syndrome and a mm -hmm. syndrome that I think has put uh, genetics into the a real place in cardiology. Mm -hmm. It's, it was a great, uh, a great advance, I think, to get the genetics in cardiology and the Brugada syndrome. Yeah, it has changed everything. It's, uh, we understand not only you know, hereditary diseases now, but also non-hereditary diseases that are affected by, because of the genetics mm -hmm. that we, 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 we wear with ourselves. So it has changed a lot in, in cardiology, I agree. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the greatest advice you can give to the young cardiologists that are now starting? Well, um, one thing is, uh, first of all, you know, I have uh, my lima, which is on, on uh, my correspondence all the time, is nihil sini nixu, and that means nothing without effort. Yeah? And I think that for the new generation, what I would like to, for them to realize uh, is, first of all, that I'm really worried about the future of the next generations, not only of doctors, biotechnologies, you know, every people that uh, has been studying a lot and that now might be jobless in spite of having a very, very uh, intensive training. So I'm very worried about that. And I would say, well, just go and keep on fighting. There is only one thing that rewards at the end of the, your life, and it's hard working. And never expect other people to do anything for you. Just do it yourself, because nobody loves more you than yourself, mm -hmm. as you know, as uh, as th is th said. Th th thanks for this good advice, <laughs> really. And the last question: uh, What do you think is the right balance between medicine and personal life? Well, I think that the the best balance that you can have is if you are both in medicine, you know, and if you have the opportunity to work with your wife together in medicine like I, I do at the present time, this is wonderful because we are all the time together. So that means that we can discuss positively or negatively mm -hmm. about medicine, but also about family affairs 24 hours a day. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I want to uh, give thanks again, Professor Brugada, to be with us uh, for this interview for the Cardio Stars program, and we will see it soon in internet. In internet, also. Thank, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you.